Hi everyone, Angela here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this reversible tote bag out of a pair of jeans, but you can use any fabric that you like to make this design. What's great about this bag is that you don't need to sew handles and you don't need any hardware like grommets. I'm using a pair of wide straight leg jeans. They measure about 11 inches wide. First cut away the bottom hems from the legs and then put together again. From the bottom, measure up 15 inches, mark across, and then cut both layers. I want to feature this top stitch seam in the center of the bag, so I'm just going to cut open the plain seams. Open them up, match the seams with wrong sides together. From the center seam, measure across 9.5 inches on each side at the top and bottom. Join those marks with a ruler and cut. You can find links for the tools I use down in the description below. At the bottom, cut 2.5 inch squares on each corner. Turn around to the top edge. From the center, mark 3 inches then another 2 inches, and then repeat on the other side. At those marks, cut small notches through both layers. For the lining, I'm using 100% cotton and folding it with right sides together. Place one of the outer pieces on top, with the side parallel to the selvage edge or lengthwise grain. Don't include any of the selvage edge. Cut out exactly the same size, and then clip the sides and bottom. We'll be leaving an opening here on the side. Place the outer layers right sides together, match that center seam, clip the sides and bottom. I'm using a Brother NV50S sewing machine. The link for this and the tools I use are in the description below. Make sure to use coupon code NOTCHESNV50S for the special offer. Increase the stitch length to 4. With a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, start at the top edge, back tack, stitch and then back tack to finish. Don't pull any thread out, just lift your foot and start the next edge on the bottom. This will save you thread and it'll also help avoid bird nesting or tangling of the threads underneath. For the lining, back tack at the top, stitch down about 2 or 3 inches and back tack, skip over about 4 inches, back tack again and then continue stitching around to the top and trim all your threads. For both pieces, adjust the fabric so that you can separate the seams and press them all open flat. Try not to press down on the other parts of the fabric. Flatten out the corners, match the edges and the center seams, then clip in place. Again with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, stitch across all four corners, back tacking at the start and finish. For the handle loops, I'm using the denim again to cut 4 pieces 2.5 inches by 4 inches. For each piece, have wrong side up, fold in half to find the center, then fold so that the short ends line up in the middle and press. For the handles, I'm using cotton cording that's just a little bit more than quarter of an inch or 7.5 millimeters. You can also use a slightly thicker rope. Measure out a length of 55 inches, wrap some tape around it so it doesn't unravel, and then cut down the center. You'll need two pieces at this length. Hold on to the cord about 6 inches from the end. 4 inches further down, grab it and then create a small loop. This part of the cord should be sitting on top. Hang on to it and then feed the other end from underneath and pull through. Leave it as a slightly loose overhand knot. About 8 inches over, create another loop, but this time have it so that the cord sits underneath. Hold on to the loop and feed the end through, but this time from the top. The knots should be a mirror image of each other. Take the end, feed it through the knot from underneath, and then feed it through the next knot from the top. Adjust it so that you have about 6 inches at each end from the knot. To connect the strap ends, cut two pieces of fabric about an inch by two inches. 
place the ends of the cords along the width of the fabric, butt the ends together and stitch in place. Wrap the fabric all around and then stitch securely on each side. For added strength, stitch lengthwise a few times along the fabric. Turn the outer layer right side out. Locate where the notches are and then place a strap above. Place the end of the strap inside the loop, fold it in half lining up the edges, then center that between the two notches and clip in place. Repeat on the other end and for the strap on the other side. Stitch quarter of an inch from the edge on each loop to hold them in place. No need to back tack. Place the bag inside the lining with right sides together, match the side seams and clip in place. Then match the top edges and clip all around. Using a half inch seam allowance, stitch around the top. The edge of the presser foot will be right beside the bulk of the loop. To finish, just overlap the stitching a couple of inches. Turn the bag right side out, pull on both sides of the fabric and press that top seam all around nice and flat. Push in the lining and then adjust that top seam so that the outer layer is just a tiny little bit on the inside and the lining doesn't show on the outside. Adjust the entire top edge like that and press all around. If you need to, clip all around to hold in place. Starting at the side seam, top stitch quarter of an inch all around, back tacking at the start and finish. If you want, you can just finish by edge stitching the opening closed on the lining. To make this bag fully reversible, sew by hand using a ladder stitch or slip stitch to close the opening. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this stitch, have a look at my bone pillow tutorial. When done nicely, the stitching should be invisible. Make this bag in any size and out of any fabric you like. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks again for watching, take care and happy sewing!